Hello class, Mr. Fino here. This is unit four, lesson two, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. So in this section, you will learn what the pharaohs of ancient Egypt accomplished and how they did it. So here's a little piece of art showing some of those pharaohs. All right, so let's first start off with the question of what is a pharaoh? So a pharaoh was a ruler of ancient Egypt. Think of them as like the king. They're like the king of ancient Egypt. But they were more than the king, right? Because they were believed to be gods, right? They weren't just man, they were believed to be gods. They owned all the land and were responsible for the well people's well-being. So it was their responsibility to make sure that people were cared for. And because they took on that responsibility and were known as a god, if things went poorly, you know, they were held responsible. And they were kings, generals, right? So they led the army and religious leaders. So um, the couple of pictures I included here on the left, is just showing the kind of power they had, right? They were gods. And on the right, this is actually a piece of Egyptian art, ancient Egyptian art. And you can see the pharaoh is a lot bigger than everyone else. And that's intentional because um, the size of the person just shows their importance, how important they were. Uh, the next question, what did archaeologists learn about ancient Egypt in 1922? So archaeologists learned about the famous pharaoh, King Tutankhamun. So I believe it was Howard Carter who was a part of this expedition of archaeologists. And they made this really great discovery of a tomb, a T-O-M-B, tomb, where the pharaoh, King Tut, King Tutankhamun, was buried. So uh, they discovered the tomb uh, with golden coffins, numerous items, and a mummy. Um, so this picture on the left, I believe that's probably Howard Carter looking at the remains of the, um, the coffin, the sarcophagus and the mummies probably in there. And on the right here, this shows kind of what the tomb looked like inside. So you can see there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that they buried with the fairy, they, sorry, they buried with the Pharaoh because they believed he needed all these things for the afterlife. All right, and here's some pictures of King Tut. So uh, on the left, this is the golden coffin in which he was buried. Uh, the center picture shows what historians and scientists believe King Tut looked like. And as you can see, he doesn't look very healthy. And um, honestly, that's because that these, these pharaohs were largely inbred, meaning they were the product of siblings having them. So like in the previous family, you know, a sister and a brother would have had King Tut. And so he had a lot of uh, genetic mutations. On the right, this is, I believe, the Pharaoh's, uh, King Tut's body, his remains, the mummy, the weird kid. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, what was the first period of ancient Egypt? So the first period of ancient Egypt was the Old Kingdom. Makes sense, the Old Kingdom, so oldest. And in this period, Pharaoh set up a strong government, a strong central government, and built pyramids as tombs for themselves. So you can see here on the left kind of Pharaoh at the top and the people working for them underneath them. And on the right is kind of a dissection of what, uh, what a pyramid would look like. You can see kind of where the tomb would be. Uh, so what was the second period of ancient Egypt? The second period of ancient Egypt was the Middle Kingdom. All right, you got old, now I've got middle. Uh, in this period, there were many great achievements in literature, art, and architecture. So literature meaning books and stories, like on the left, art, like, you know, paintings and uh, statues, and architecture, which is uh, buildings and temples. And this picture on the right is actually a building where I went to school, where I went to college in Davis, at UC Davis. Um, this is the building where both of my majors were. Um, the social sciences. I majored in economics and history. And it was this weird modern style of architecture. And on campus, we, we knew it as the Death Star, which we got from, from Star Wars. Uh, and then last question here about the periods. What was the third period of ancient Egypt? The third period of ancient Egypt was the New Kingdom. So we had the old, middle, and now we have the New Kingdom. In this period, Egypt reached the height of its power. And Pharaohs increased trade and built massive monuments. So here's a picture on the left of 
what trade might have looked like, right? Mostly trading goods. They didn't, probably didn't have money at the, at the time. And then massive monuments like you can see here, the Sphinx in the foreground and the massive pyramid in the background. Um, so let's take a look at this map that's showing some of the important monument sites as well as where each of these kingdoms was located. So the Old Kingdom and the Middle Kingdom are actually pretty similar in size and they're in the same sort of locations, all kind of around the Nile River and the Delta, not quite into Kush. And then the New Kingdom, the green area, kind of is the biggest and it's spread, you can see, all the way up through Canaan, along the Mediterranean Sea and down, down the Nile into Kush. Um, and even kind of touching on the Red Sea at the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, so our first question about one of the pharaohs is who was the pharaoh Khufu? Uh, Khufu was the most famous pharaoh of the Old Kingdom, that first kingdom that we talked about. So Khufu, there's not much that's actually known about him as a person, and there are questions about the type of ruler he was. So he's largely shrouded in mystery, um, but he did establish the pharaoh as the central authority and the pharaoh had strict control of the food supply overseeing the harvest and storage of extra grain so it, it would have been the pharaoh's responsibility to store grain in case there were future seasons of famine and they didn't have enough food they could go to those stores and um, give food for their people uh, so here on the left is a statue of khufu this center one's kind of creepy but i guess it's a face facial statue of khufu on the right this is just showing what a store of grain would look like uh, a little bit more about khufu he built the great pyramid at giza which you can see here on the left uh, this pyramid is made up of more than two million blocks two million and you can see how big they are in this picture um but you can see that this man standing in front of one of the blocks they're massive two million of these uh khufu's burial chamber had six roofs to hold it up so massive and again um it took about 20 years to complete but historians and scientists don't understand exactly how they did it they have theories but they didn't have any kind of modern machinery obviously so one theory is maybe aliens came and helped them do it but i don't know probably not uh who was the pharaoh senusret the first uh, he was a strong ruler during the Middle Kingdom. So we talked about the old, now we're into the middle. The arts thrived under Senesret. So he controlled mines of gold, copper, and gems, which were used to make jewelry. So that's one type of art. And then some of the greatest Egyptian literature were written during his reign. And one, of, one example of this is the story of Sinhu. Um, and yeah, if you want to look see more of what that's about you can look in the textbook but here we have a picture of a gold mine which was mentioned here and then this on the bottom is some of that story the story of Sinhu and I think that's a picture of that character Sinhu a little bit more about Sinusret the first his greatest accomplishments were in religious architecture so building temples and pyramids and um, things for their religion so many temples shrines and monuments were built and improved during his reign and then the white chapel was made of hard white stone and was probably covered in gold. Um, so this picture here is one of his temples. And here we have the white chapel. Um, this is reconstructed. This isn't the original. The original white temple was torn down by a later pharaoh to use the resources, but historians and archeologists rebuilt this to show what it looked like. And again, they, they believe that it was covered in gold. Uh, who was the pharaoh Hatshepsut? So here's our next pharaoh. She was an important ruler during the New Kingdom and one of Egypt's first female pharaohs. So that's pretty cool. We have a female pharaoh here, Hatshepsut. She encouraged art, architecture, and increased trade. Uh, Hatshepsut strengthened her position in several ways. She filled her government with loyal advisors who were required to support her. And she demanded the same respect as male rulers and sometimes even dressed as a man to achieve that sort of respect. So this picture on the left is a statue of what her face is believed to have looked like. Here on the center is a statue again um, where she was dressed as a man. And then this picture on the right just shows advisors to the pharaoh. A little bit more about Hatshepsut. 
she, her big thing was she promoted trade with other countries. Um, and one of the most famous trade expeditions was to punt an African kingdom at the southern end of the Red Sea. Um, and she built a wonderful temple at Deir al-Bari, which was built into a cliff above the Nile River. Uh, and the entrance was adorned with obelisks, which are um, they're like very thin um, sort of columns, and 200 sphinx statues. So this picture is showing trade. And then here we have a picture of, on the left, it just shows where Punt is, the African kingdom where she traded with, right? You can see it on the bottom of the Red Sea. And then this picture on the right shows her temple um, at Deir al-Bari, right? So you can see how it's built to the side of the cliff. And this is a famous temple that people visit today in Egypt. Uh, the last pharaoh we're going to look at here is Pharaoh uh, Ramses II. So he was the most famous pharaoh, and he ruled later in the New Kingdom after Hatshepsut for more than 60 years. Ramses was best known for his military leadership and building many monuments, so he's a strong military ruler. And Ramses, he did use his power to excess, meaning he, you know, he abused his power. So he had over 100 wives and more than 100 children, which is pretty crazy. And he built hundreds of statues dedicated to himself. So he was he was full of himself, essentially. On the left here, we see a picture of him as a, a, you know in, in the military. And on the right, this is a we're going to see at the Temple of Karnak, which we'll see uh, a couple more pictures in a bit. But lots of statues just of himself. Uh, a little bit more. He fought in the army as a captain at age 10, which is pretty impressive that he fought. He was a captain in the army at age 10. He signed the world's first peace treaty with the Hittite Empire. That's a pretty big deal. And that's what this picture on the right is, pieces of that treaty. Uh, and then uh, Abu Simbel, so that, that is, it wasn't the Temple of Karnak. Abu Simbel is one of his more recognizable monuments, a temple carved into a cliff along the Nile River. And there are four giant statues of himself at the entrance. So let's see what that looked like here. So all those statues in front of that temple are him. Right, he's at the, in the front. And then this is from a distance. You can see it, where it, its location was along the Nile. Uh, so, so in conclusion, the summary here. In this lesson, we learned about the major Egyptian pharaohs and their accomplishments. All right, thank you.